Welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at type def and structures in C. I know that's something that can really cause problems for people beginning C and it can be very confusing when you first see it as to why we have to write the syntax the way we do. So I've got a very simple program here where I've declared a structure called wizard on line four and the wizard has two properties. It's got age, which is an integer, name, full imagination here, 64 uh, character array. Then on line 10 here, there's a function called print my int and that is printing an integer. It takes in an integer as a parameter called x and and then prints the value of that to the screen. Finally, we've got the main here, where on line 17, we declare a variable called my int x value 23, and hopefully print that value to the screen. If I go ahead and compile this program and then run this program, as hopefully you'll expect, we get the value my int 23 printed to the screen. Now I'd like to do exactly the same thing using my structure that I've defined here. Now, if we look at line 17 and break it down into exactly what's been done here, we've declared a type, an integer. Then we've declared the variable name that we want our integer to be. And finally, we've assigned immediately upon initialization of the variable, a value to that variable. We can do the same thing for a structure as well. So I can say that my type is going to be wizard. That's my structure I've defined. I'll call the variable name w1, and I want to immediately assign some values to the structure as well. And the way you can do that is by using the curly braces, if you weren't aware of this already anyway, and then using the property name, colon, and the value, comma, next property name, colon, value, and so on. And what we're doing here then is we're initializing our wizard structure variable to the variable name w1 and setting immediately the values. And you can already see here that we've got some red underline. And this is usually my experience when you're beginning C, the first thing that happens and leads to a little bit of head scratching. In fact, if I go uh, save this file and try and compile this file, I imagine we're going to get, yes, a few errors. And if I scroll up here, you can see that we've got unknown type name wizard. So somehow our program is not aware of our type, despite the fact we're fairly sure that we have declared a type because on line four, we've typed struct and then wizard. So what's happened here? The issue comes with the definition of our type. We know that an int is defined by int. We know, for example, that a car is defined by car, but a structure is not defined by a single word. It's defined by both of those together. So the equivalent of int for a structure is both of these together. It's the keyword struct followed by the name of the struct that we've defined here. So rather than using wizard on its own, what I actually need to use is struct wizard w1 is equal to this. And now you can see that the error goes away. And if I just clear the screen and try and compile the program, you can see now that the program compiles. If I want to add in a function then to print a wizard, I have to do exactly the same thing. Here I'm printing an integer and saying I want a parameter of type int and I want to send in the integer x. Here I'm saying I want a parameter of type struct wizard and the wizard that I'm sending in is this W here. Therefore, I can print my wizard to the screen. So print wizard and W1 and then compile the program, run the program and I get see some spells from Gandalf age 12. The important thing to remember when you first start out, it's this struct and wizard combined that you have to use to tell the C compiler what type it is actually that you're using. Now, this is often shortened in C code using something called type def. So if you're not familiar with what type def is, it's a way of declaring your own custom types. So for example, I can type the keyword type def that tells the compiler that I want to define my own type. If I type int, that says what the actual base type of my definition is. So I'm defining an integer and I could call it, for example, my call int. And now what I can do throughout the program is I can actually use my call int in the place of an integer. So if I scroll down and go here, I can say my call int, my int x. And to all intents and purposes, this for the compiler is an integer. It's just I've defined it as a custom type up here. If I go and compile and run the program, we shouldn't get any errors. And I still get my int is 23. Now you can do the same thing with structures and you have to follow exactly the same pattern as here. So we want to type type def. We then want our type and that'll be our fully qualified type with the struct and the wizard followed by the name that we want to use. So I can type type def here and then I want to type struct and then I want to type wizard and now I can give it my custom name. So I'm going to, uh, I'll call it S underscore wizard. So structure wizard. And I've defined my own custom type here and I can use this now in place of these two keywords here. So if I copy that then and drop down into the print wizard function and replace it with S wizard and also down to here, 
What we should see if I save the file is that we don't get any nasty red underlines, and if I go and compile the file, then we get the same result. The difference being now is that we're now using the type def to actually use our custom type definition so that we can eliminate the need for writing struct and wizard throughout the program. Now there is an even shorter version of this that you often see in C, and that's actually to put the type def before the declaration of the structure here, and then after the declaration of the structure, actually put what your custom type def name is here. This here is the equivalent of what we've done here. So if I just comment this out and save, the code hopefully is going to compile and run exactly as it did before. This is really no different to what we've done here, it's just a slightly more succinct syntax. We still use swizzard throughout the rest of the program and the compiler knows that it's this structure here that we've defined as that type. And there's actually an even shorter version of this that you often find used, and in fact I've used throughout the chess programming series for the chess engine in C, and that is to eliminate this name completely because it's kind of superfluous now, we don't really need it throughout the program. So we now have a definition of a structure without actually a name of the structure here, but we do have a type that we've declared here called swizzard, and that will be of type struct with age and then name. So again, if I clear the screen and go and run and compile the program, you can see that we get exactly the same result as before. And that's really all there is to it. Now you will find there's quite a lot of debate in the C community about which of these is best practice. If you're working on a project uh, in conjunction or collaboration with a lot of other people, usually it's frowned upon to do something like this, and people actually prefer to have no type defs at all so that you're forced to use the struct keyword. The reason for that is if somebody's looking at code for the first time, they can look at variables and actually understand if that variable is a structure or not, because if you can't see that straight away, it can be very, very confusing. Nevertheless, hopefully you have a little bit of a better understanding as to why type def and struct are used together in this way.